My adventurous friends, welcome to Perugia! Our travel through Italy continues. Today we are going to discover the capital of Umbria, placed in the green heart of Italy, in a stunning panoramic point of view on the surrounding hills. Perugia, young and lively, with lots of events that enliven citizens' life. We are going to wander among thousands of stands of the Euro Chocolate, the main festival in Europe dedicated to chocolate. We are going to visit the Perugina factory, with the biggest praline in the world, take class with chocolate headmasters, walk on a carpet made of chocolate, walk the streets to know the art and architecture of Perugia, discover the subterranean city, cherish the perfect ceiling, stroll on a thousand years old aqueduct, learn how to glass paint. Well, that's it. Not bad, isn't it? So don't miss this video! Here we are, back on our journey through Italy. Today I am in Perugia, an amazing 3000 years old city. It was one of the main Etruscan cities, then came the Romans, and later it became the icon of the medieval cities. Many great artists came by, like Pinturicchio, well, Perugino, Raffaello, and many, many others. And, according to you, in a city like this, how can you get to the old town? By bus? No, no, no. By tram? No, 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 no. The underground? No, 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 no. You get to the old town of Perugia by escalator. Escalator? Come and see. Oh yeah! Believe it or not, escalators are the main public transportation in Perugia. This is the easiest, quickest and free way to get to the very old town, that is placed on the top of a hill at about 1600 feet above sea level. A tour of Perugia must begin here. We are in 4th of November Square, the heart of the old town. Here you find the main attraction of the city, just like the cathedral here behind me, dedicated to Saint Lawrence, one of the saint patron of the city, the majestic Palazzo dei Priori, Vannucci Street, named after one of the most important artists who worked in Perugia, Pietro Vannucci, better known as Perugino, and the Fontana Maggiore, a medieval fountain symbol of the city of Perugia. The fountain rises in the middle of 4th of November Square. It is one of the most beautiful fountains in Italy. Built at the end of the 13th century, it's made of white and pink marble, with lots of sculptures representing prophets and saints, the labors of the months, the signs of the zodiac, events from the Roman history, and the two symbols of the city, a lion and a griffin. As I was saying, the cathedral is dedicated to Saint Lawrence, the Saint Patron of Perugia. They have been working at the construction of the cathedral for more than 150 years. And as you can see, it should have been covered in white and pink marble, but it was placed only on the lower part of the side facade. That's why the cathedral is also known as the Naked Church. And, something curious, it's the side facade and not the front one to overlook the square. Inside the cathedral you can see many frescoes from the 18th century. Besides, in a chapel is shielded the holy ring, that the legend says belonged to Saint Mary. The cloister of the cathedral is the headquarters of the Capitular Museum, while in the archaeological area is possible to visit the ancient Acropolis of Perugia. On the opposite side of 4th of November Square we find the Palazzo dei Priori, one of the best medieval buildings in Italy. On the facade there are the copies of the bronze sculptures of the lion and the griffin. The authentic ones are inside the palace, because they are the oldest and biggest medieval bronze sculptures ever made in Italy. In the oldest part of the building, the Sala dei Notari is covered in precious frescoes from the late 13th century, 
representing stories from the Bible and coats of arms of old governors of the city. Moreover, in the room there is a fresco made by Pinturicchio. But the masterpiece you cannot miss is in the old rooms of the Collegio del Cambio. The most important work of Perugino is one of the main paintings of the 15th century. Part of the paintings were completed by one of his pupils, a young painter called uh, Raffaello. Well, not bad, right? These frescoes were described as one of the three best ceilings in the world. On the top floor of the Palazzo dei Priori you can visit the National Gallery of Umbria, the most completed museum of Central Italy art. More than 3,000 artworks, paintings, sculptures, textiles, jewelry testifying seven centuries of Italian culture and history, from the 13th to the 19th century. If you like this topic, this is the place for you. But notice that you need at least two hours to visit it. Now I want to celebrate Perugia, the city of chocolate. Yes, I am in the city during the days of the Euro Chocolate, the biggest festival in Europe dedicated to chocolate. And since I know myself and I know I can stay away from temptation... Okay, okay, you're not going to buy this, but now I want to start from here. I am in 4th of November Square at the beginning of Banucci Street. The chocolate festival ends in Italy Square, 500 yards from here. I want to start here and I don't want to get to Italy Square. I want to get tanked of chocolate before I get to Italy Square. <sighs> I go. Hey, hey, follow me. Jeez, I'm full of chocolate. So much chocolate. Really good. Really good. And since I am a professional, I am a professional documentarist, I passed by every stand, from the first to the last one. Maybe I overdid, but it's totally worth it. I didn't want to leave the festival. Well, today I want to bring you to discover a different side of Perugia. Not in the old town, but it's raining. Plus, I was told I can visit the Perugina factory, the famous chocolate factory. And it's going to be really interesting because they tell you the story of chocolate, and the story of the factory. They show you how chocolate is made, there are workshops, chocolate classes, they give you tasties. And... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to visit it. But then stop with chocolate. I don't want to overdo. I want to take a stroll, I take you with me to see a new district of Perugia, we are going to see many other interesting things. But well, cappuccino and croissant first, to start the day. But no biscuits, seriously, I don't want to overdo, no, 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 no. But maybe just a couple, just two and then stop. We go for a walk, we go visit Perugia, 
ok? Perugina. The house of chocolate exists and it's few miles from the city center of Perugia. In this unique place you can discover how the food of the gods is made. In the museum of the factory you will know the story of chocolate and the story of the firm, the production chain, all the machinery, packages, pictures and memorable commercials that made the fortune of the firm. And kindly they give you a taste. Strong point of the exhibit is the legendary Bacio Perugina, from the brilliant idea of Luisa Spagnoli to the Guinness World Record Bacio, the biggest chocolate praline in the world. It is 7 feet tall and 7.6 feet wide. 13,000 pounds of chocolate! And I need another taste. During the guided tour visitors are brought in the heart of the factory, where they can see how chocolate is worked. And also here, of course, they give you another taste. Then you can walk on a multitude of bars of chocolate, or, if you feel tired, you can sit and relax on what is not a lit or decorated carpet, of course. But, exactly, chocolate pralines. And then, for... sorry, I need another bite. I was saying that if you feel in the mood, you can take class with the most capable chocolate headmasters, who, at the end of the lesson, are going to give you more tasties. And if you want more, before the guided tour is over, you can buy chocolate at the Perugina store. But for me it's too much, it's time to get back to the city. Well, maybe just the last one. Dai, su, facciamo un ripassino. Ok, let's have a review. What have you learned about Perugia? Etruscan city, then Roman, then the icon of medieval cities, good. Fourth of November Square, the fountain, the cathedral, the naked cathedral, perfect. Palazzo dei Priori, Vannucci Street, Vannucci Pietro, known as Perugino. Really good, congratulations, but... There is another important place in Perugia. Hmm? Nothing. I'll help you. Look at me. Nothing. Okay. Well, actually, I'm not helping you. Maybe I diverted you. The Rocca Paulina. Yes, I'm here in front of the Rocca Paulina. That is a fortress built and named after the Pope Paolo Farnese III, who wanted to fortify the city. He wanted to do the same thing that the Romans did with Castel Sant'Angelo. In order to build a fortress, the Pope wanted many houses, streets, uh, towers and churches to be destroyed. An entire district was destroyed. That's why this fortress became the icon of the power and the authority of the Pope. And the citizens hated it. And many times they besieged it. Until 1860, right before the birth of the Kingdom of Italy when the fortress was largely destroyed. What we can see nowadays is this huge gate called Porta Marzia. Actually, it is an Etruscan gate which was dismantled to protect it from the attacks to the fortress and then it was reassembled here. But the main part of the Rocca Paulina is underground, the most suggestive part. It was like a little city inside the city, with streets, shops, workshops, and today we can still walk along those streets, through those shops and rooms. So, come with me. The underground fortress was abandoned for decades, but in recent years it has been brought to light and today we can see the very heart of the fortress, with old alleys and houses of the medieval city. There still are the remains of the stadium where people was used to play a game called pallone, a kind of tennis and bocce. Inside the fortress there is the museum of the Rocca Paulina, that explains its history. The fortress is also an exhibition center, and it hosts many events. For instance, during Christmas time there is an exhibit of handmade decorations and a flea market.
Sto camminando su I am walking on an aqueduct, the medieval aqueduct of Perugia. It's more than 2.5 miles long, built in the second half of the 13th century to bring water to the old town. I am walking backwards because I want to show you I'm going up on the hill. That's right. Here, without pumps, but just with a pressurized duct, water could reach the highest point of the hill, that is, the Fontana Maggiore. The aqueduct was cast off in 1835, and it was converted into a street with many houses, nowadays maybe the most suggestive street in Perugia. As the sun goes down, the streets and squares of Perugia in Leven. People start to go to the many bars and restaurants of the old town. And I got hungry too. I'm going to look for a quiet place and then hang out in the center. The next morning Perugia wakes up under a Bebo sun. The city gets its usual rhythm. Tourists go backwards and forwards the streets of the old town. And I want to discover the less known Perugia, outside the ancient protective walls, by the Etruscan arch, in front of the beautiful building of the biggest university for foreign students in Italy. And end up to a really special and unexpected place, the workshop of glass painters Moretti Caserli. The workshop was founded by Francesco Moretti in 1895. It's placed in a building from the 15th century, the only one remaining just outside the Rocca Paulina. Ludovico Caselli, nephew of Francesco Moretti, began to collaborate with his uncle. Years later, his daughters Rosa and Cecilia carried on the activity, realizing many stained glass windows during their career. Among those, the very famous one that reproduced Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, nowadays exposed in the cemetery of Glendale, in Los Angeles. Today, the Moretti Caselli workshop artists still use the secrets of their ancestors. However, they have integrated the old knowledge with new studies and projects. One of Rosa and Cecilia's great nephew organizes interesting guided tours in this unique workshop where people can plunge into history and enjoy an old craft carried on for centuries. In the workshop there are still old tools, colors, paintings, plasters, furnaces that testify the life of these great artists and the rebirth of this ancient art form, thanks to Francesco Moretti. Across the years, the artists who worked in this workshop created many pieces for the church of Santa Maria degli Angeli in Assisi, many stained glass windows for the Cathedral of Perugia and Todi, works for the International Exposition of 1867 in Paris and the portrait of the Queen Margherita. And this was Perugia. If you like it, let me know by putting a thumb up. I'm ready to leave and go visit another great Italian destination. You... You come with me. Subscribe my channel for more videos, so it will be like traveling together across Italy to discover this beautiful country. Well, I guess this is it. See you next time. Italian Travel.